Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Scenic Root Astrology. Michaela here, and today we're talking about the Leo New Moon that's on July 28th and happening at 1.54 p.m. East Coast time. A couple announcements before we begin. My Patreon group is up, and I will be having a Leo New Moon meeting on um, that Thursday at 11 a.m. East Coast time. So if you want to join, if you want to start meeting other people who are in the astrology community and you want to talk about your chart and go further into depth around the Leo new moon and then just whatever else you want to talk about astrologically wise, the energy that's coming ahead, how we're seeing it in the collective, uh, how we're feeling it in our personal lives, um, it's going to be like a very open conversation and anybody's welcome to join. So I hope that you do. Um, of course, I'm open for readings. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, spiritual coaching, or evolutionary astrology coaching, um, all of that information will be down below. So with that, I'm just going to get into this new moon. Um, I was just spending some time meditating and reflecting, looking at the chart before I jumped on and um, tuning into the energy and the way that I want to help approach it for everybody is focusing on the chakras that I really think are being defined under this energy. So, you know, a new moon, of course, is when the sun and the moon are um, together in conjunct, uh, in a conjunction in, in the Leo uh, constellation right now. And we have Mercury also in uh, Leo under this new moon at uh, 18 degrees. I'll pull up the chart in a little bit. I just kind of want to dig into the energy uh, before I bring, I bring up the chart and we look at the aspects. Uh, if you want to follow along with this as well, if you don't know where this is happening for your chart on my website, you can pull up your chart for free. Uh, you can also pull it up on astro.com for free. You can make a free account through there. Uh, they have a ton of cool stuff on their website. I use the Porphyry house system, but of course you're welcome to use whatever house system uh, you feel comfortable with. So yeah, so this new moon is stellar um, important because we are transitioning ourselves, each of us, uh, towards a new cycle, towards becoming our own individual and really recalibrating areas in our life, um, restructuring areas in our life uh, that's based on our authentic purpose, right? And, and what we want the rest of our lives to look like. And society really has been shifted and it is changing and we can feel it uh, since COVID, you know, since 2022, but even it's cycling up to that. We've been slowly having these changes and then like, you know, we have the world pandemic and that was really um, such a catalyst for all these major changes now. So we're riding the tide now, but we're actually going into some pretty intense astrological weather moving forward. Um, and in intense, I mean like transformational, you know, a really, really good edgy push for us to do things differently and create the life that we want, right? So, you know, when I was looking at this new moon cycle, um, of course, with every new moon, it starts a, a four week period, a six month period and a two and a half year cycle as well. And when you start to link the lunar phases uh, into your own life, you'll, you'll notice how these uh, dynamics unravel. Okay. in these areas of your life. So this is going to be affecting your sun sign, which is huge. Okay. This new moon will be affecting your sun sign, wherever that is placed in the chart, your fifth house. And, um, the house with Leo on the cusp, you know, so some of us might have a Leo son, uh, happy birthday, Leos. And um, so your son will be in the, the same house with Leo on the cusp, you know, but some of us um, have like a Libra sun sign, for instance, and uh, we'll have Leo on the, you know, 10th house cusp or something like that. And so it'll be, you know, different, right? So, and then have, um, you know, this, well, the sun would be in the first or maybe the 12th, whatever. But anyway, so this is about your 
purpose, like initiating a new cycle around your purpose and having your own personal power. Okay. And you want to think about how you define yourself in the world and how you exert your, your creative purpose. Okay. Cause the Leo archetype has to do with our creativity and no matter what sun sign you have, whether you're, you're a Scorpio or you're an Aries, okay, you're a Gemini, it, it doesn't matter what your sun sign is, you still have the quality and the undertone of what it means to be Leo. Um, because in the natural zodiac, the sun rules Leo. Okay, so the sun is our vitality. All right. And, it, and it's our ability to assert our free will. Okay. And it's our, it's our self-expression. So how do you do that? Right. These are questions that you, that you kind of want to start like asking yourself is how do I define who I am? Um, and what does that look like? Okay. Um, I actually I dated a Leo for a while. And uh, uh, um, one of the funny things about what he said that made so much sense when, you know, he was expressing himself as a Leo was Michaela, you can create your own avatar. You could just be your own avatar. And it's such a Leo thing to say, because you literally can create and define the person that you want to be. And under this, uh, this new moon, right? The sun and the moon come together. Well, both of them represent parts of the ego, which create the personality. When it comes to the moon, it's how you emotionally evolve and see yourself, okay? And emotions will edge out the formation of the ego because um, I like to use the quote, when a, a river cuts through rock through persistence, well, water and emotions are considered one and the same, right? So um, alchemically, right? Water and emotion are alchemically the same. So imagine emotions like forming, running over you through your whole entire life. Well, that helps form your moon, which is your inner ego and how you see yourself, right? But then that gets reflected. The moon gets reflected against the sun as well. So it's like your will and your purpose and your vitality. And it's the colorful part of your moon, right? It, it brings color and taste and um, individuation to a sense to the sun archetype and to how you express yourself, okay? Um, and the sun is creative and in its own ways, okay? So you know, we're all different. We all have these really wild and crazy charts that all help define the whole entire chart itself. Um, but the sun really is the focal point that is illuminating and providing the light for every other planet in the chart, right? And it illuminates and it brights every, it brightens everything up. So um, it takes up a giant space if you will, in the chart. And, and that's why our egos take up a giant space. And that's why if you know a Leo, for, for instance, they tend to be very like robust and loud and, and kind of in your face. And they're like, Rah! you know, and they're also very uh, childlike, okay, in a sense. And they like to play and they kind of like test things and they test the water and stuff. And um, they're very creative and theatrical and sometimes a little over exaggerative, right? So um, I love Leo energy. Um, I have South Node Leo, so it's like the, I, I just love Leo energy. And, and it, it brings color and radiance to the world, okay? So that's what all of our sun signs do in our specific sun way. So while you're thinking under this new moon, I really want you to think about like your sun sign and who you are. And, and if you're confused around that, then this is a new moon to really figure that out too. And it's going to ask you to do that. Um, and it's really important that we actually understand who we are and what our purpose is and where we're going. And I'll explain why, because of how the chart is for this new moon because uh, it's really essential for for the 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 years ahead it's it really is so um 
lunations are so important to me in astrology and that we're paying attention and we're working with the, the moon cycles. And when we start to break it down and when we sit with the energy every uh, two weeks, it, it's actually really easy to navigate all the crazy rest of the stuff of the transits that, that are happening. Because to me, working with the lunations helps you break up the cycles like throughout the year and throughout the month. And it's almost like little checkpoints, you know what I mean? Like, okay, the planet wants me to like focus on this right now under the new moon. And it's like a checkpoint. And I know that there may be a Mars retrograde or a Mercury retrograde or a Venus uh, retrograde or ingress into a different sign, right? I know that Pluto might be doing some weird aspects, right? But the lunations become these really easy ways to navigate through the very complicated landscape of um, astrology in itself. And so, and it's so important to understand because it is, again, the moon and the sun so deeply linked together in their cycles, right? New moon together, full moon opposing each other, right? And then the in-between, the waxing, the waning, the gibbous it's vital for our sense of self and our ability to come out and shine and express yourself in the world and radiate your energy and take up your personal space that you are meant to take up in this world. So, um, you know, when I was thinking about this, this new moon, I'm like, wow, like this is really, really connected to, um, these, the solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra and the throat chakra. So the solar plexus is, is our decision-making center. Okay. And, um, it's really important that we understand what the solar plexus does because it's where we are able to make our choices for ourselves based in self-care, right. And self-respect. So, honestly, the first three chakras of your whole system are the most important. If you're not grounded with your root and your sacral and then your solar, um, you might have a hard time navigating through, through the world, feeling safe and secure and um, being able to make decisions for yourself that feel really good. And you kind of might aimlessly, um, go about life without a purpose, right? If you're not, if your first three chakra, chakras aren't in alignment. So I'm actually going to pull a card at the end of this, um, using one of the, the chakra deck that my business partner and I just produced, but, um, so the solar plexus, you, you want to be able to understand that, and it's right above the navel. You want to understand that you have free will and choice and, Right now, in time and space with the current astrological weather, make sure that you're making the right choices for yourself and your purpose and where you want to head in the world. Because the, are, the energy and the circumstances that are going to happen on a macrocosm level are going to start to unearth us from the root chakra up on a collective scale. So we want to be really, really sturdy and firm about what's going on now. And I won't get into any of these politics stuff right for this, this, I want to keep it like lighthearted and like Leo energy, you know, but when we look at the news and look at what's happening around us, we understand, and we're not clueless to the major shifts and changes that are happening. So time to really define yourself, really know where you stand, really know um, what choices you're making for yourself and the plan ahead, right? And you don't have to have like the whole picture figured out, but when you know yourself and you can make those choices based on your self-respect and your self-love, okay, then you're operating from a good place. Then you lead into the heart chakra, which is very Leo energy because Leo rules the heart. I would say the moon has a great affinity with the, the solar plexus, okay, with the, with the stomach. And if we look at cancer archetypals, the stomach, we go to the Leo energy 
uh, it rules the heart. Well, now you're able to open up your heart space because you feel safe and secure with who you are. And the heart center is so freaking important because it connects all the top three chakras to the top, the, the bottom three, right? And it's like where we radiate out our energy field, right? So heart chakra is blocked. You know, a lot of people, you'll see the way that they carry themselves. For instance, you'll see it in their face and their dynamic, right? You'll see the way that people are just acting and interacting with one another. And you, you know, it's, it becomes depressing because we are light beings and we're energy beings that need to emanate on love. Okay. So this new moon is really about being able to birth a new process within yourself. Um, but making sure that your heart is open to that, that new process. Okay. New moons are dark periods. Um, you know, you can't see the moon, but it's, it's the seed. The seed is being planted um, and it will grow and evolve and you'll see it become a full moon, okay? So eventually, like as the cycle goes on. So it's really important. And then the, the throat chakra I'm seeing as well being activated under this new moon because the Leo energy is making a big old giant freaking square. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mercury and Leo making um, a big, 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 big square and Mercury rules, you know, our communication. So throw, but to the Taurus archetype in the chart. Okay. And I'm going to bring this up in a minute, but Taurus uh, rules throat chakra as well. Okay. So, um, and why is that? Well, because we have to know what our, our values and our needs are. And uh, we have to be able to be firm on that, okay? And and to to know who we to know what our values and our needs are helps define our son. It helps define who we feel we are meant to be, um, what we like and what we don't like, okay? Taurus in the natural zodiac comes before Leo, so we have to know you know, what our tastes are, like what makes us comfortable, what our personal needs are and what our values are before we can really step into and define, um, you know, our, our sun sign, our ego and our full personality and sense of self. Okay. And so you see these dynamics really play out, um, once you, once you start to learn all these archetypes of the astrology and how we're all connected. Okay. So I'm going to pull up the chart now. And I also want to mention as I pull up the chart that I have, um, if you are interested, a 10% off. Very thirsty. I'm so sorry. Um, discount for Luna astrology software. And I absolutely love this software. I've been using it for a few years. It's super easy to use. Um, and it's uh, super affordable. So I uh, will link that down below. If that interests you, you can cancel your membership at any time. So you're not committed to Luna. If you just want to like try it out and see what it's like. Um, and I'll be, I'll be making a tutorial video on how to use the software too. It's super, super, super easy once you get the hang of it. Um, and they're doing a really good job and it's really pretty and it looks good. And yeah, happy to offer that to you. There's only a few of us with this uh, discount code available. So I think you really want to get it now while you can. So anyway, let's see if I can have my drawer. Yes. Okay. So you can see up here um, in the Leo house, right? Five degrees, 38 minutes. Um, that's where the new moon is, is taking place. And Mercury is like way over here um, and 18 degrees Leo. So it was just Kazemi, the sun, um, you know, probably had some realizations uh, um, as far as the direction you're going in your life. And um, you might be taking on that that Mercury and Leo energy now of like really wanting to express yourself and your ego and just being like, okay, this is what I know is right for me. Um, sorry if you can see my notes, but I'm just going to move them over there for now. Clear, clear all drawings. 
and uh god i gotta get better at this guys <laughs> one second there we go here we go okay so yeah we got it over here um, so I want to talk about the square. Okay. Um, because, okay. So we know that we're going into new cycle under the new moon. We know the sun and the moon are together. They're meeting. We've got this new cycle. That's really important that we're initiating for ourselves, And it's about your personal power and your choices and your self-expression. Okay. Really, really important that you're, um, defining yourself at this time okay and you're understanding where you're going who you are what is right for you and knowing that you have free will okay you don't have to make any choices or do anything um that doesn't feel in alignment with you anymore it's really imperative that we understand that there are things in our lives that don't feel in alignment and it's time to break it away to let go of it. Okay. And that's signified by the, this nodal access too, because what's going on, um, under this is we also have this major conjunction over here with Mars, Uranus, and the North node in Taurus. Okay. And on the other side, Mercury is also squaring the South node in Scorpio. And if you've, you know, paid attention to my, uh, videos lately, you know, that I've been, you know, you know that I've been talking about the square, the Saturn square as well down here, right? To the nodes, to the null axis, right? And the the, um, the nodes are like moving away because they move counterclockwise, right? They're the only ones that move counterclockwise in the uh, in the horoscope. Uh, Saturn is eventually going to go all the way back to like I don't know, I think it's seventeen or eighteen degrees, and then it's going to station forward, and it's going to move towards um, the north node right and then we're going to be asked to understand the structures that we've been working on that is about our individuality saturn and aquarius right and we're going to have to meet it with the with the nodes eventually which i think will probably happen in aries it looks like at one point and we're going to be asked to initiate that right and come together with that but they will be moving together soon. And then the South node will be moving away from Saturn as, as the months go on. Okay. So Mercury up here in Leo is like, okay, let's, let's take that throat chakra energy, right? That's let's take that communication and, and the way that we think and we process and we talk about things, right? And we put it in that Leo archetype of, of self-expression of heart energy, of doing what makes you feel unique and creative, right? And different and carrying that. But you have this big giant square here to the North Node, Uranus and Mars and Taurus. Well, a square dynamic is, is, is a stressful dynamic in the chart, right? It creates tension. Um, but it's, I don't want us to think of it as like super bad energy squares and or be scared of squares because they create a dynamic where there's change and there's an evolution because you have to work on it, right? Because it's there and you can't ignore it and you feel the tension, right? And so it's either going to, you're going to work with the square, the square is going to work with you, okay? And understand that it's evolutionary growth when we have those squares, whether it's in our natal chart or if it's in a horoscope in a transit like, like it is for the new moon. So uh, Uranus and Taurus, right? It's going to be there for a few more years. It's about a seven year cycle and a sign. Um, we haven't seen this kind of conjunction in a, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of years because the Uranus cycle is, um, 84 years. So, you know, it's been about 84 years since Uranus has been in a Taurus last. And I think the last time it was in Taurus was, around the uh, beginning of World War II. So that's something that we need to keep on the backdrop um, to understand that history repeats itself and cycles repeat itself. So that's something that we should be looking at um, is the fact that our resources, which has to do with the Taurus archetype, right, are being stressed right now under this Uranian energy that wants the liberation, okay? 
And um, it really wants to break away from the, the, self, the reliance that we've had on resources that really aren't um, make, help, helping us go in the right direction. And the Mars in there is really going to initiate that for us. Okay. So Mars and Taurus, like, you know, Taurus can be like that slow archetype, but Mars and Taurus is the bull. It is so strong in this sign. And if you piss off a bull, you know, it goes charging and it goes running. And I think when it meets this Uranus, like when it exactly conjuncts Uranus, which is on July 31st or August 1st around there, I feel like there's going to be some big initiation and change and you will feel it in our, in our inner world, right. In our personal lives, but we'll also see something collectively and globally too. And so, you know, it will have to do with perhaps our money and our currency, and maybe we're getting a new surge, or maybe we're getting a new form of currency or one's coming back, or, um, you know, we see a dynamic around the way that we exchange our money right now, um, changes and shifts. Okay. And Mars has this warrior type of energy. It's this cutting type of energy and it can be expressed either good or bad uh, under this dynamic. And the North node is like where we're heading towards and it can be a bit aggressive, right? So we got, we got these three planets. Well, the nodes aren't a planet, but we've got these, you know, these three, two planets in the node that really, really bring a lot of change, a lot of energy into the mix and they're coming together and they're conjuncting. And we're seeing this preview from this square under this new moon. Um, and, and I think on a personal level, which is gonna help you is to really understand and vocalize either to yourself or to individuals that you need to in your world, in your life, this isn't working for me. I don't, this doesn't bring value to me. This isn't what I like. This isn't what I want. Okay. And stick to your guns with that. Okay. And, and follow suit on making the change. Okay. And it might help you realize as well, if you look to the opposite side, the Mercury square, the South node is that there's probably times in either your prior lives or prior decades or years, depending on how old you are, you know, where you've done things and you've chosen to merge with things, but it didn't, it caused you some sort of heart pain, right? Or uh, loss, okay? Um, or betrayal, for instance, right? And so really look to the South Node to look for those lessons and like ruminate and think about yourself. Where have I made choices before um, and commitments? And their commitment isn't bad. We want to make commitments to the things that um, serve our purpose and serve our soul. And here's an opportunity to not repeat patterns anymore that haven't helped you in the past and, and have really just like led you to getting stung, for instance, right? If you're going to think about the Scorpios as the, the scorpion, um, you know, or have really like created you to, to die, like the Phoenix story of the Scorpio, right? To have death and rebirth, which is a cyclical process of life and a necessary process for us at certain times. But under this new moon, it's the birthing of a new state of evolution for you, um, as shown by this, all these square aspects in the chart for, you know, what are you dedicating to your soul purpose now? And this will help you generate confidence for yourself too, which is another big theme for Leo. Like now you can start practicing, making really healthy choices and moving in new directions for yourself. Um, that will help you build confidence to express yourself and step into your purpose in this world and step into your light and take up space and not have to back down anymore because you feel like you owe somebody something because you don't owe anybody anything. You know, this is about the self under this new moon. This is a time to be, you know, the quote, I'm going to quote it 
quote unquote narcissistic energy, but like, honestly, it's, it's a time to serve you because this is your light. This is your son. This is your own life that you're playing with and your own avatar. And it's really, really important that you understand what choices you're making right now and what directions you're going in. Cause you're not going to get these energies again in your lifetime. Like, right. What is happening? Like, you're not going to see um, this, this conjunction in the Taurus area of your life again. You know what I mean? It's going to be another 18, 19 years until you have the nodes in these parts of your chart again. Okay. So in Saturn, it's going to be another 30 years until Saturn is in Aquarius again. Right. So building on that individuation process and you for sure are not going to see Pluto going through Capricorn in this lifetime either which uh, very shortly will be leaving and going into Aquarius uh, come early spring next year. Um, it will retrograde back into Capricorn for a little bit, but after that, we are, we are full Pluto and Aquarius, and that is a whole new cycle, okay? And you, you won't see Neptune and Pisces again, um, and you won't see Uranus and Taurus <laughs> again. So like, there's some like really significant energy right now about your direction, your foundation, right? And the choices that you're making are also building the world for the longevity. So God help you if you want to reincarnate again, right? What do you want the world to look like for your children, your children's children, you know, and your lives that you might come into uh, you know, a hundred years from now to whatever, whenever you choose to reincarnate, if you do. It's big. So another thing I wanted to point out was that the choices that you're making right now, um, are connected to this Pluto retrograde um, in Capricorn. And, and you'll notice that almost all the outer planets are retrograde. We've got um, <clears throat> we've got Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Neptune retrograde. Um, Uranus will go retrograde soon. Jupiter is about to go retrograde soon um, and go back into Pisces and go back over the 29th degree of Pisces. Um, which is a very, very potent degree in the Zodiac because it's the very last degree in it. And it does uh, represent, and that's a whole, you know, 12 year, 13 year cycle too, that you're, you're not going to see again. Right. So just to add to that, the choices that you're making um, in the, in the Leo house, make an in conjunction to the Capricorn house and why Capricorn is important. And I'm bringing it up, even though the orbs are not like in an alignment yet, but they will be in the next couple of weeks. And, but Pluto's still playing a major part, right? In the backdrop of everything. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Capricorn has to do with like the structure of, of the self and, and the boundaries that you're initiating and, and foundations and governmental stuff and, and how you build things in your material world and the hard work and the hard effort that you put in for, for the long haul. Um, well, this makes an in conjunct to the Leo. So, so Leo energy and Capricorn energy have this like kid and parent kind of combination with each other. Okay. And sometimes, um, we have to understand that, uh, we test our parents when we're children and growing up, right? We, we want to, mm, I don't know. I snuck out of my, uh, my room when I was a, a teenager, cause I wanted to go to green day and Jimmy eat world, my first concert ever, ever. And I wasn't allowed to. So I snuck out of my, uh, window, my bedroom window to go to this concert. Right. And because the parents, right, they, they put on the rules that, uh, you can't go to a concert alone, nor can you go out at 11 PM when you're 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, my Leo son, well, well, I'm Aries, right? My, my Aries son was like, I'm just going to go for it and I'm just going to do it. Right. And I didn't mean any harm. I just really love music. 
And I wanted to go see my favorite band, right? So we have this like dynamic between Capricorn and Leo that's going on right here. But because Pluto, Pluto is retrograding Capricorn and it's asking you to like break down the soul's um, structures in a way that don't serve you anymore, right? So maybe the Leo sun, maybe the sun has grown up now and is able to make choices for themselves, right? And kind of like know when there's a goal that's worth risk taking, if that makes sense. Okay. So now that we're adults here and we're practicing our childlike behavior, but we're making adult decisions because we're adults in the world, you know, the, the son might want to risk something, right. It might want to take a risk for that, for new energy. And that, you know, that's very much Mars square Mercury right here too, right. Mars being, um, an Aries archetype a risk taking archetype, um, you might be thinking about taking that leap in that new direction, right. And is it worth it to ask yourself that? Like, what is the plan that you're working for and looking for, for the long haul, right? And building that confidence over that decision-making um, is really going to help cultivate that, those, that solar plexus and help you open up the heart chakra and the throat chakra. Okay. So it's all connected under this, this, this new moon. Um, it's very self-expressive and vibrant. And I'm really encouraging people to, to step into the choices. And um, another thing that I'll point out too, is that the Mercury is making um, a trine to Chiron, okay, um, under this new moon. So it could be very healing. Your choices could go two ways. If you're doing it in your own radiance and you're doing it to provide yourself light and express yourself and go in your purpose and your direction and it feels good to you this is going to be super healing for chiron retrograde in aries because chiron wants you to heal the individual self right now the instinctual desire to show up and be here i am this is me right the formation, the beginning of the formation of the ego is represented by Aries and Chiron and Aries right now, people, we are feeling a, a wound around being able to express ourselves, right? Or show up for ourselves, defend ourselves, right? So if you are working with this new moon in a very healthy way and you feel that, okay, this is going to be super healing for the Chiron um, energy in your chart, the Aries section in your chart. But if you're not, I do suspect that this would create a, a further and a deeper wound and, and you'll carry that on and it'll be really painful to carry that on and you might have some regrets around that, okay? And so I really don't want people to feel like they have to have regrets, okay? You, you will know your sense of direction and purpose because it will come from a deep, deep level of knowing. And that's why I think it's really important for us to tune in to that solar plexus energy, that gut instinct, okay? And I'll, I'll meditate on these things. I'll feel it in my body, um, you know, just to give you, just to give you an example, if, if you're like, okay, how do I know, Michaela? Like, this is the right direction for me. Well, one time I was so stressed out about making a decision that I ended up having all these stomach issues. And I thought it was stuff that I was eating because I eat pretty clean. Like I don't, I don't eat meat. I'm a, I'm pretty much vegan for the most part. I don't have dairy, nothing like that. I thought I was having just food issues. And I went to a hospital even, and they were like, nothing's wrong with you. You're a hypochondriac. <laughs> and, um, I ended up understanding that it was around these decisions that I needed to make. And it was causing me so much stress in the solar plexus that I was experiencing physical pain. And, and that's what happens with, with energy. That's, that's exactly how it works is um, the emotion behind it will start to manifest physically. Okay. So, you know, if you're having stomach issues right now, if you're having, um, you know, yeah, just stomach aches, stomach issues, um, food's not digesting well. It might be a solar plexus issue if you're experiencing heartburn, okay? Um, or, you know, you're just like feeling really 
like small, for instance, it might be a heart chakra issue. You don't feel like you can um, express your heart or open up your heart. And, you know, if you, if you feel tight in the throat, or if you feel like at a loss for words, or even heartburn moves up into the throat, you know, that could be a throat chakra issue. Okay. And you might need to, you know, pay attention to the Taurus section of your house right now. What planets are in it? What house is it ruling? right? Where is Venus in the archetype as well? Um, we didn't really touch on Venus and I'll touch on Venus lightly right now, but, um, cause Venus is going to move her way over the next couple of weeks and then make an opposition to Pluto. Uh, but Venus is in cancer asking us to nurture our values. Okay. And, and nurture and come in a really soft, compassionate, caring way, um, also from that solar energy, the solar plexus energy, um, what is a value to you? Okay. This is really a time where your choices are making a very big impact on where your life direction is heading right now. All right. So I'm just going to stop the record, um, stop the video right there. Cause we talked a lot about the new moon chart, but, um, yeah, it's, it's a vital time to, to step into your personal power and to um, know what your, your radiance is and what, where and how you want to shine in the world um, and, and do that. You know, don't be afraid to do that and uh, just go for it. That's also initiated by that, that Mercury square Mars. Um, sometimes you just have to go for it and just just risk it and know that it's worth the risk if it means something to you okay and i'll tell you that i have mercury in aries and so that mercury square mars is very much like the Mer having mercury in aries and knowing that sometimes you don't know everything or you don't have the correct words to say but you just have to go for it anyway if your heart is aligned with it and uh, if you feel like it's your purpose and your destiny okay I really encourage people to um, plant the seeds and to take the initiative um, because it's a new moon and it's birthing something new for you. And this uh, in your sun, in the sun, in your chart, and then the Leo house and the fifth house. So it's creative. Okay. Um, and it can be generous, but be generous to yourself first. Okay. That's most important. So I'm going to pull um, a card just collectively for us from um, my newly published Oracle deck. So if you're, you don't want to stay for that, like, just please give me a like and a, a subscribe and check out my mama moons meetup group on Patreon. So we can meet for these lunations. Um, but other than that, I, uh, wrote the sacral chakra oracle deck with my business partner Brittany Montagna and we've included tarot astrology and science in every card um, we had an artist draw these beautiful beautiful cards and the sacral chakra is for a few things but one of them is creativity and manifestation and both are really important under leo energy right what do we want to create what do we want to manifest um you know, sacral energy is also to do with our relationships in the world and our sexuality, which is um, really important because Eros, sexuality is the life force energy, right? The life force that is used um, in everything to create. So uh, lovely deck. You can get yours on Amazon or on the link down below. I'll post it. going to pull one card for everybody who's uh, watching this video. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Passion warrior is what we got. Passion warrior. So yes, <laughs> go after what you want be be passionate about the direction that you're going towards um fighting for you what brings you life force what brings you creativity what makes you feel like you have a passion for what makes you feel like you have a purpose for um and really fight for that okay that is that is mercury square mars right there okay um mercury and leo uh, square the mars so be really strong. And it's funny too, because Mars 
is in Taurus and she's got her um, feet rooted into the earth right there. And she's in the passion warrior pose um, from yoga. I'm not a yoga teacher. Brittany actually is, but um, you know, fighting for your, for your sense of direction and fighting and being really strong and stable and, and stern as well, which is Mars and Taurus. Okay. And um, having passion for that. So I love that. So anyway, that's how the uh, Oracle deck works. If in case you've never used an Oracle deck before, it's very simple. Anybody can use it. And it comes with a very big guidebook that we wrote. So um, the messages will be in there. And um, there's a tarot, astrology, and science connection for all of them as well. So anyway, I wish you all very much love and light. Tell me what's going on for you in your world right now. Tell me how this energy is showing up if this resonated and um, yeah, how you're feeling astrologically and if there's anything I can do to help. So just, I love to read comments. So just drop me one down below and I will be back again soon, everybody. Okay. Take care.